Hey, welcome North Village Church. My name is Michael. It's great to be with you here today. We are going to continue in our series called the seven I am statements of Jesus. And today we're going to look at John chapter 14, where Jesus says the words, I am the way, the truth, and the life. This is a, this is a powerful statement. And, and this is a statement that people tend to quote, like when they get in arguments uh, or debates uh, about this idea of religious pluralism, you know, the idea that all paths lead to God. And, and then somebody will say, what about John 14, 6? I am the way, you know, it's just like, ah, no one comes to the father, right? <laughs> like these words are true. Uh, those words are true. Uh, but when Jesus says these words, it's, it's not to win a debate. Uh, it's not uh, an argument. Uh, in fact, Jesus says these words when the disciples are in a place of uh, panic and confusion and fear. Uh, so that these words are words of comfort. All right? Jesus is saying these words to bring comfort. The disciples, they, they love Jesus. They're following Jesus. They've given up everything uh, to follow Jesus, and Jesus keeps talking about leaving uh, so that their whole kind of purpose is disappearing right before their eyes, and so they're, they're worried, they're fearful, and Jesus says in what I imagine the most loving way possible. He says to the disciples, he says, look at me. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Like nobody comes to the Father except through me. Like I'm, I am everything you need to know. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And we're going to dig into it in our passage today. But before we do, I just want to say welcome to all those who are watching online. Uh, man, our, our elders are in process right now of, of planning uh, for our church family to, to worship together face-to-face -face on June 14th. On June 1st, we're going to send out a, um, a sign-up on the Realm, give you all the details. We're going to meet at, a, at another church location. Uh, we're going to meet in uh, the afternoon. Uh, we're going to have plenty of room for social distancing. We'll give you all the details uh, beginning in, in June. And, and we're excited to meet face-to-face, uh, -face, but even if you're not able uh, to come, we're still going to provide content online we're still going to be uh, a church family and and that's what makes uh, these these different ways to connect so important there's there's first there's our youtube channel i hope you've signed up for our youtube channel subscribe to our youtube channel because this is a great way uh, to to stay connected to to, to god's word uh, through our youtube channel so subscribe um, our facebook page is a great way to stay connected to people uh, there, there's people like Richard Sanders. I see you Sunday mornings, Facebook watch party, 10 a.m. Richard Sanders signed up for Facebook just to stay connected to his church family. I love that. Uh, there's also, if you are new to our church family, go to northvillagechurch.com forward slash COVID-19. There's a quick little survey there, just a few questions for us to get to know you and learn how we can best come alongside you. So take advantage of, of that. And then there's our devotional. I hope you're tracking with us. All these things moving. It gets, it's easy to get confused. Well, on Monday, go to page 123, get into God's Word. We cover it on Sundays, and then as a church family, we get to grow uh, spiritually. All right, let's look at John chapter 14. Uh, we're we're going to see three sub points from our passage today. You want to write these in your notes. Uh, the where, the how, and the why. Write that down in, in your notes. We typically go verse by verse, uh, but with all this transition, we're, we're doing things a little different. And, and we've asked our very own Kay Tooley to read our passage for us uh, today. And she's going to read John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would have told you, for I go to prepare a place for you. 
if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. Thanks, Kay. Hasn't it been fun to hear uh, from our church family reading God's Word? That's been so cool. Um, all right. To better understand John chapter 14, you know we got to look at John chapter 13 because in John chapter 13, Jesus is speaking to the disciples and he says like, uh, will you uh, seek after me? And, and Peter's uh, response is, well, yeah, where are you going? And then Jesus says, well, I am going uh, in a place where you cannot follow, uh, but you will follow me afterward, which is kind of confusing, right? Then Jesus launches into this prediction. This is in John 13, uh, a prediction of Peter's denial, which that doesn't make the disciples uh, feel any better, uh, partly because Jesus has just talked about Judas and his betrayal. Uh, so he's talking about leaving. Judas is betraying. Peter is denying. And by the end of John chapter 13, the disciples are absolutely confused. They're starting to panic. Uh, they're, they're, they're getting fearful. And, and that's what launches Jesus into verses 1 to 6, where we see our three subpoints. And our first subpoint is the where. So write that, write that in your notes, the where. In verses 1 to 6, Jesus says, He's going to prepare a place in my Father's house. And that wording can be a little confusing. Uh, the phrase my father's house, that's a reference to heaven. Write that, write that in your notes. Uh, and, and, and if you're like doing the dishes, you know, trying to multitask, don't uh, sit down, like open up God's word, look at God's word, prepare yourself to receive what God has to, to, to say to you, because uh, this is important. Uh, when we think of heaven, we tend to think of like clouds and, and angels, things in the future. But notice in verse 2, Jesus describes my father's house, a place with many dwellings, or, or some translations use the word uh, rooms, so that when Jesus is using that phrase, my father's house, he's talking about heaven. He's talking about like the ultimate home. I mean, think about home. <laughs> I mean, right now we're around the home all, all the time, uh, so maybe we're a little tired of home. But, but generally speaking, home, man, home is a place of familiarity, right? Home is a place of security. Uh, home is a, is a place of, of rest. And, man, the disciples, they're struggling with panic and confusion and fear and in the midst of all of that Jesus is pointing them to the to the idea of the ultimate home that comes in him now in our culture today like right now in you know May 2020 we, we might be thinking to ourselves like COVID-19 yeah I can I can relate to the disciples confusion panic and fear but like hold up we need to remember uh, there was confusion, panic, and fear before COVID-19, right? Like, this isn't just a COVID-19 problem. Remember just all the challenges you have with career and questions about what's going to happen? Are you going to get fired? Are you going to get found out? You know, are they going to, uh, like, sabotage you or, or uh, like, sneak something up? on you. There's a lot of panic and fear around our career and work. There's our relationships. You know, are you going to meet that person? Well, you've met that person. Is it going to go somewhere? It's going somewhere. Are you going to get married? You got married. Are you going to stay married? There's lots of panic and confusion and fear around our romantic relationships. 
when Scripture's teaching us and that all of humanity was created to be at home with God, to be at peace with God, where everything is perfect, everything is secure. That's Genesis 1 and 2. But in Genesis 3, we see sin enter into the equation, and there's a fracture, right? There's, there's a, a brokenness in our relationship with God so that all of humanity becomes like orphans. And the good news is that Jesus has come to make a way home for us. And in the midst of our confusion and our panic and our fear, Jesus is calling us through his word to come home. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Come to me. Nobody gets to the Father but through me. Like, I am the way home. Let's look at our, our second sub-point. Our first is the where. Our second is the how. Write that in your notes. In John 13 and 14, the disciples are not only focusing on, like, Jesus, where are you going? But also, Jesus, how do we get there? I mean, it seems fair, right? The disciples have left everything to follow Jesus. So it's, it's, an, it's important to clarify how, how. How do we follow you? Jesus? Hey, come home. Okay, how do, we, how do we do that? And at first glance, when you look at the Scripture, it might sound like Jesus is going into the construction business, right? <laughs> He's like, don't worry. My father's house has many rooms, and I'm going to prepare a place, like, hand me a hammer, Jesus is a carpenter. Like, <laughs> we need to keep in mind, when you look at the context of John, when you look at the context, right, this, in the life of Jesus, the wood that Jesus is going to get, and it's not at the lumber store. That when Jesus says the phrase, like, I'm going to prepare a place for you, Jesus is pointing us to the cross. The wood's not at the lumber store. The wood's at the, at the cross, that the preparation is in, it's in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. That's exactly what Jesus, Jesus is pointing us to the gospel. One of the benefits of teaching online, uh, doing these video worship services, is that it makes it easier to, to present things visually. And so what I wanted to do is just kind of walk you through a, a simple visual gospel presentation. Uh, and, and, I, and this first time, I just want you to watch it. Like just watch it and listen. It's like a minute and a half. It's really short. Just watch it and listen. And, and then afterwards, uh, maybe tomorrow or, or, or just later on this afternoon, man, come back and watch this part again. Get these words in your head so that you can share this simple gospel presentation, not only with ourselves, we need to hear this, but also with others. Remember, Jesus is saying, hey, I, I've made a way for you to come home. This is how. First, you start off with a circle and write the word brokenness in the circle. And brokenness, well, that just means that, that our world is characterized by brokenness so that we don't have to look very hard to see disease, disasters, wars, and a lot of pain. But that's not God's original design. Scripture teaches us in the very beginning, God created everything to be perfect, to enjoy, to, to live forever to be with him and it was it was perfect but we rejected that that's called sin and all of that sin led to our brokenness and pursuing life on our own eventually leads to death the good news is that Jesus enters into our brokenness through his birth and then Jesus takes the death that we deserve at the cross so that in three days, Jesus conquers death in the resurrection. So that Jesus makes a way out of our brokenness. Now, we are all trying to escape the brokenness of humanity. Right? It's that longing for home that we talked about earlier. It's called sin. 
We are trying to accomplish something in our career to fix that brokenness. We're trying to fix that, that brokenness through romantic relationships. Sometimes we, we even do religious things to try to escape the brokenness. But brokenness leads to death. And Jesus has come to provide a way out of brokenness by us turning toward Him and away from our sin. If we turn from our sin and believe that Jesus died for us and rose from the dead, we can leave brokenness and grow in a relationship with God and pursue His design so that we can not only grow in a relationship with God, but also go into the broken lives of other people and help them to come home through faith in Jesus so that today we are either growing in God's design for our lives or we're still living in brokenness. In John 14, Jesus is speaking to the disciples and he's speaking to us through his word. And he's saying, come home. And no doubt we see the brokenness in this world. We see the brokenness in our lives. We're never going to be able to fix it on our own. And so Jesus calls out to us. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. Come home. Listen, if, if you never have done that, let me encourage you to do that right now. Confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that Jesus has been raised from the dead and you will be saved. Do that right now. You know, our, our careers, I mean, it's good to work. Our careers are great. But they're not home. Does that, does that make sense? Like it's 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 great to to chase after a, a career and and to grow in your career, but you don't want to you don't want to make your career your home. It's great to have a relationship, pursue that romantic relationship, but you don't want to make that relationship your home. It's great to have like problems with the injustice that's in our world today. We see it on our news and we're like, that's not right. And we absolutely should speak out against it and stand up for those who are, who are overlooked, who are, who are neglected. But we don't want to make, we don't want to make that our home. Jesus is the only one that's worthy enough, that's strong enough, that's eternal enough to be our home, and He's provided a way. So won't you respond? We've talked about the where. Jesus is going to prepare a place. We talked about how, how He does it through His life, death, and resurrection. Our third point is the why. Why is Jesus so important? I mean, that's important to clarify. Why does Jesus say, Nobody comes to the Father but through me. Why? Man, our culture hears that language today, and it sounds closed-minded, right? It, it sounds narrow, right? Our, our culture's response is, well, surely, right, surely all of humanity, they will agree, all of humanity is longing for a sense of home, so why not have many ways to get home, right? Right. I mean, there, there, there's, there's lots of ways to get to Dallas. You don't have to just take I-35. You can take 281, come up the back way. It doesn't really matter how we get to Dallas. That's what our culture will teach us today. It doesn't matter how we get to Dallas. It just matters that we get to Dallas. Mm. Doesn't that sound wise? <laughs> but let's draw it out, right? Because it's a little sneaky. The, the, the idea that all paths are right, that all, all paths to God are right, right? That, that's called religious pluralism. Uh, it's, 
incredibly popular in our culture today. And it sounds compassionate, but you need to know that that is, that is an exclusive statement that's draped in inclusive tones. Do you hear it? Do you hear the exclusivity? All paths are right. All paths lead to God. Who says? Well, our culture has said, our culture has placed itself as the authority, right? Our culture has made it an absolute statement. Uh, our culture has, has made it exclusive. Uh, uh, and, and, and it's incredibly sneaky. It's, it's hard to hear. You might drift off right now. Stay with me. High schoolers, especially high schoolers, middle schoolers even, and you guys, if, you, if you're on Facebook or Snapchat, Twitter, Instagram, you're being taught that all paths lead to God, right? It, your, your high school teachers are teaching you that all paths lead to God. If you're in a school system in Austin, like that's absolutely, it's in our movies, it's in our music, it's in our literature, like you're, you're just consuming it and we don't even, we don't even realize uh, how, it's, how it's coming into our lives. And at some point you're going to hear somebody give this poem. They're going to be like, it's just like the poem of the blind men and the elephant. Maybe you've already heard it. It's, in, it's incredibly popular, but they'll tell the story of there's, there's blind men uh, and, and they gather around an elephant. And well, you know, the, um, the first blind man, he's, he's uh, holding on to the elephant's trunk. And he says, well, the the, 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 this is long and it's flexible, and so this must be a snake. And the other blind man, he, he touches the leg of the elephant and says, Oh, it's a tree. It's strong and sturdy. And the other blind man touches uh, the elephant and says, Oh, no, it's a wall. It's so wide and thick. But then the narrator says, but each blind man is coming to a different conclusion because they are only touching parts of the elephant. And so it is with the belief systems of the world. Doesn't that sound wise, right? All the faith systems of the world are blind and who really knows? But did you notice in the story who knows? The narrator, the narrator knows that people are blind, knows that it's an elephant, and the narrator knows all and sees all. And our culture has placed itself in that position. Our culture is the one who looks at all the faith systems of the world and says, uh, well, they, they don't really know, and so all faith systems lead to God. Uh, it's, it's, it's arrogant. Uh, it's offensive. Uh, it's, it's presumptuous. Uh, it's, it's misleading uh, because that's not what all faith systems of the world teach. And that instead of, instead of our culture placing itself as the final authority uh, on all things, I think, I think the better response is that is that we would, we would admit that we are blind, that we are all blind. Our culture is blind, and we need to examine. And how do we get home? What is the path to get home? That we would admit that we are all lost. We are all broken. We are all blind. But what is home, and how do you get there? And what I have found is that when I've studied all the faith systems of the world, that they all present some type of rules, like Buddhism, Muhammad, uh, Judaism, our humanistic belief system of believe in yourself and you can do it no matter what. It's all a list of rules of how to get home. And it's only in Jesus who says, and there are no rules, that Jesus isn't, isn't waiting for you to 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 meet those rules to get to Him, but that He 
comes to you. That is the gospel. Jesus isn't up in Dallas waiting for you to find your path to him. Jesus, Jesus comes to you. And he's saying to us in his word, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father but through me because Jesus is the only one who has the authority to get us home. Right? He comes and finds us and he takes us home. And he's the only one. He has prepared the way. That's John chapter 14. He's lived the perfect life. He's, he's died the death at the cross that we deserve. He's conquered our death in the resurrection. He has prepared a way home for us. Now, won't you believe in Jesus? He's the only one who has the authority. He's the only one who's made a way home for us. Won't you respond? Now, I'll close with a story. Uh, in 2006, I was invited to um, go to the state capital of Texas at night and go up to the top of the dome, walk outside of the dome, and pray over our city. It was awesome. Like it was at night. I felt like Batman. So cool. And, and we had to go through, you know, like closed off areas. And we walked up this rickety staircase to, to, to get to the top. We stepped outside. Uh, the dome on the state capitol overlooking the city and praying for the city. And it was such a position of honor uh, for me to be in that place. But uh, you know the reason I was standing in that place? It wasn't because of my financial position. It wasn't because of my education. It wasn't because of my physical appearances. It, it wasn't uh, because of uh, of all these reasons, like the only reason I was able to stand in that place is because I knew somebody who had the authority to get me to that place. And in John chapter 14, Jesus is the only one. Now our culture will admit there is brokenness, that we are lost, all right? That there's a longing to go home. Jesus is the only one who has the authority, who's prepared a way for us to come home. Won't you respond to him? Believe in him. Give your life to him. Do that today. Jesus, thank you so much uh, for this time. I confess, in the midst of just all these things swirling around me, like I feel lost so many times. And, and I'm trying to kind of go through uh, the day on my own to, to, to figure these things, these things out. And and what I need to do is I just need to stop and turn to you, Jesus. And so I pray for every man, woman, and child right now that in the midst of no matter what's going on in their lives, that, 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 they, would, that they would give up on trying to make a way on their own and that we would turn to Jesus. And that we would confess our need for him. That we would ask for his help and that we would find the home a taste of heaven while we are here on earth, that we wouldn't wait uh, to a coming day, but that we would taste of it today in Jesus. We thank you for it. It's in his name that we pray. Amen.